In my preparation for this interview, I went back to your maiden speech. I think they now call it a first speech. Or, but I prefer the term maiden speech. I think it's so much more elegant and lyrical. And that was where you uh, said that you'd learned how important empirical facts are. And uh, your studies, uh, since your studies are focused on earth and science and technology, you had tried in several ways, freedom of information, correspondence reports from the CSIRO, the Bureau of Mu Mineral Meteorology, the universities, to get data proving that humans' use of hydrocarbons actually affected the climate. You'd done all of this, you'd gone into this rigorous search to find evidence that humans caused climate change and you got zero from them. And you pointed out an inconvenient truth that from the 30s to the 70s, atmospheric temperatures cooled for 40 years straight. And you said the temperature today is now cooler than 130 years ago. And you said it's basic, the sun warms the Earth's surface, the surface warms the atmosphere, the atmosphere cools the surface. And you said that's basic to suggest, or to ask that the atmosphere can warm the, the surfaces it cannot. Have you changed your mind from that time? No, I haven't. And I've done something since then, David. Uh, when I got into the Senate, prior to getting into the Senate, in 2016, I used to hold people accountable, people who are pushing this climate fraud accountable and say we're, and, and, and give them the evidence that shows it's, it's nonsense. When I got into the Senate, I had a letter prepared on Senate letterhead, my office Senate letterhead. And as soon as I was sworn in, I was legally a senator, I raced back to my office, signed the letter, sent it to the CSIR and said, where's your evidence? I want a presentation. And to cut a long story short, we had to track them down, chase them down, hold them accountable. We eventually got into a room together and they gave me a two and a half hour, three hour presentation. No evidence, none at all. So we had a second session uh, with the chief scientist. And in that, in that startling uh, first 20 minutes, he talked and talked and talked. And then we asked him a question and he looked at me, David, and I'll, I'll always remember this, um, Alan Finkel, Dr. Alan Finkel, an engineer, and he said, I don't understand the climate. I, I, I'm not a climate scientist and I don't understand it. And yet that man was running around the countryside <laughs> telling us we must cut our use of carbon di uh, cut, cut our use of hydrocarbon fuels that produce carbon dioxide. And then he went on. After, after we finished our interview, we, we, he went on around the country preaching about this rubbish. It's just lies. And, and so uh, anyway, we said to him, after he said that he is not a climate scientist and doesn't understand it, I said to him, I want a fair income presentation and a discussion, a real discussion for four hours. And he and Senator Sinodinas, who was the science minister at the time, agreed with me that that would happen. We scheduled a date. And then a little bit before that date, he was overseas. We were told he couldn't make it. Now, he, he did come back, but he didn't come back to do a presentation with us. So he got the CSIRO a second time. Still no evidence proving the carbon dioxide from human activity is, is affecting the climate in any unprecedented way, in any way at all. Uh, we had a third presentation, and, and I could go into the details of that, but it's just terrible. Um, they, they embarrassed themselves, David, uh, and, and perhaps we could explore that one day in the future, but I've, I've also chased people internationally. I've chased the, the head of NASA's Goddard Institute of Space Studies, Climate Studies team, Dr. Gavin Schmidt. He's got nothing. He even admitted in the course of correspondence, he admitted something that contradicted what uh, NASA has been saying for many, many years. And when I pointed that out to him, he stopped corresponding with me. Um, so, you know, I, I've, I've been all over the world chasing these people and no one will debate me. No one will give me the evidence that carbon dioxide from human activity is a danger and needs to be cut. And, and, and David, you're aware of how significant the, the cuts are to our economy, 